Yes, children are always listening. We are always amazed when they copy us. But there's also, within each and every one of us, there's that child that always lives. And that child is always listening too. The spirit within us is always listening. So we have to be really careful about the words that we choose. Today, the title of my talk is a, the first part of a two-part series, and it's funny, I'm talking about somebody else's book today, and why I didn't decide to talk about my journey of writing my own book, I have no idea. It occurred to me when Kenneth mentioned it this morning, I'm like, why didn't I think of talking about my own book? But anyway, for today, we're talking about the book titled The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And Don Miguel, he was the youngest of, I don't know if it was 13 or 16 children, and he's now in his 60s, and he decided he wanted to do something different in his family. So he went to school to become a doctor, and he became a surgeon. And he did that for several years when he got into a near-fatal accident. And in that time, after the accident, he had an awareness that he had to redo his life. He wasn't on purpose. He wasn't doing what he came here to do. And he went back and he, and he spoke with his mother and he learned about the Toltec wisdom. Uh, it actually has been replaced by the Aztecs, but it's from Mexico. And it is the, the, the wisdom, the mastery that they were warriors actually. And they were self-mastery over awareness, intention, and transformation. The Toltecs were around around the same time that Jesus walked the planet. And the four agreements, in case you don't know, are uh, from the lineage of the Eagle Knights lineage of the ancient Toltec wisdom. And the four agreements are be impeccable with your word, don't take things personally, don't make assumptions, and always do your best. So today I'm going to talk about the first agreement, be impeccable with your word, and the fourth agreement. The four agreements are most accurately described as a way of life that teaches one to be happy, joyous, and authentic from a place of love. Don Miguel says, everything we do is based on agreements we have made. Agreements with ourselves, with other people, with God, with life. But most important, agreements are the ones we make with ourselves. In these agreements, we tell ourselves who we are, how to behave, what is possible, and what is impossible. One single agreement is not such a problem, but we have many agreements that come from fear, deplete our energy, and diminish our self-worth. What Don Miguel says is that up until the age of six, we have no filter. So whatever our parents did, whatever was customary in our culture, we just take on, we just believe. And those are the agreements that we have, and, and they become things that can either make us grow or not grow. But they are really the foundations of our scarcity, of our abundance, of our health, of our wealth, of love, of relationship. So as we go through our life, our work spiritually, as we discover, uncover, and discard which isn't working, and then recover, it's a spiritual practice. You, we can actually, as we discover things, we can uncover them in many different ways. We can go to therapy, we can use the four agreements, we can come to unity. It's, a, it's an individual process of how we uncover them. And then also how we recover from them. How are we going to heal from all of those agreements? But our responsibility is to release the old agreements and build new ones. The first agreement, be impeccable with your word, has layers to it. The first layer is don't lie. Be honest, don't exaggerate, we all know this, and probably do our best to live it, be trustworthy. Then the second layer of the be impeccable with your word is, avoid using the word to speak against yourself or others. Avoid gossip. What is it that you're saying to yourself about yourself? Are you being impeccable? And I love that word. That word sets such a high bar for us. It's a great word. Our word is used to create connections, but can also be used to sever bonds. The reason 
our word is so powerful, and the reason it is the power of power is it is what God gave us to create. It's the vibration, it's what we say, and therefore what we create. So we have to be careful about what we say, right? It's a double-edged sword. We want to make sure we're speaking in truth, we're speaking in the direction of what we want to create in our life. So define impeccable. In means without. Impeccatus is Latin for sin. But in this particular incident, sin is a uh, archery word, which means miss the mark. So we want to take responsibility for not talking against ourselves. That's a sin, is, is what they're saying is, to talk against ourselves is the sin. So be impeccable to not talk about against ourselves. In scripture, there's many scriptures that talk about our word. Genesis, God said, let there be a light, and there was light. In John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus demonstrated the power of the word when he said, rise up and walk to the man who did not walk for 37 years. And he did. He rose up and he walked. In unity, we know the power of the word because our founders, Myrtle and Charles Fillmore, used the word impeccably with affirmative prayer. They used the word to heal their bodies. After two years, Myrtle was able to no longer have any symptoms of illness. We use our words to create more of the life we want to be living, to speak into existence exactly what we're wanting to experience in our lives. And we have great material. I mean, we talk a lot, right? So we have lots of material to work with all the time. Has anybody said, have any of you said something, and as soon as the words came out of your mouth, you're like, oh, I wish I could take those words back. Or, has someone said something to you that has been so hurtful in these, oof, why did I say that? Or even in a courtroom, if a judge says, you know, strike that from the record, well, it's too late. The words are out there. People have heard those words. The damage is almost done or is done. So we have to practice. We have to practice what we say. Many people take more time thinking about what they're going to wear in the morning than what they're going to say to people, to themselves. So the importance, this talk is about the importance of our communication and bringing it into a spiritual practice. I'm talking about not only what we say to others, but that inner chatter. We tend to say the same thing over and over and over again. So my question is, is what you're saying to yourself empowering you or disempowering you? Is it from those old records that you heard a long time ago? Or are they new records that are more in alignment with the truth of who you are and who you know yourself to be today? Are your words in intention to help others and to transform? The Buddhists say right speech. And when they say that, they don't mean right or wrong. They mean, is it in the direction of where you want to go? They also have a tradition that makes speaking very practical, they ask three questions. Three questions. Is it true? Is it Meaning, is it your opinion or is it true for everybody? When you're speaking, speak the truth. Is it kind? And I don't mean nice. Kindness comes from the heart. It's compassion. Nice generally has a motive behind it wanting someone to do something nice back for you or wanting someone to like you, whereas kind comes from the heart and there's no expectation of getting anything back. And is it necessary? Is it mine to say something about? Is it un am I giving unsolicited advice? Is it important for me to say it and why? Become mindful of what you're saying. Get into your body. Look at what the intention is. How is your body feeling when you're saying it? Stay connected. Don't come just from here up. Come from your heart. Include your heart. Get behind what I'm expressing. What am I really wanting here? Hold yourself accountable. What is my intention? So, Many of you may be saying, I know about this. We all know about this. But do you know it? Mary Morrissey says, 
you can know about a lot of different things, but you don't know it until your life is showing that you're actually living it. So are you living from that place of impeccability? Reverend Michael Gott says, we are invited into a creative relationship with infinite resources. The way we access it and bring it into being is by speaking the word of truth against all the lies we have believed and demonstrated it in our lives. And we begin to change our experience. Pay attention, I've talked about this before, pay attention to what you're saying after you say the words, I am. Because that's where we're creating. That's where we're aligning with our higher self. If you're walking around saying, I am tired, I am struggling, I am just not good at doing these things, you can change those words easily by saying, I am feeling tired. It doesn't have the impact, it doesn't have the effect of saying, I am tired. So we're not gonna be the word police, but you'll know it in your own body as you feel it, as you're saying different words. Become aware of how you're feeling when you say it. I am is our entry into the creation of whatever it is that we want to create. Be impeccable with your words to speak from your spiritual truth. The divine potentiality of good is waiting for you to speak it into existence. Now, divine potentiality is going to create whatever it is that you're speaking. So speak of the good, speak of the truth. So that's what divine potentiality will create in your life. It may take time, it's a process. Remember, it's discover, uncover, and recover. So it's a process. It, there are times when it can happen overnight, but it also can be a process of looking at what it is that I've been believing for a long time. You know, beliefs are thoughts that we've thought over and over and over again. What beliefs do I need to change? And how can I change them? And it's not just a matter of changing them, it's what am I gonna replace them with? Because if we don't replace them with something, then it's very easy for us to go back to believing the old beliefs. So we have to put in new beliefs. Another scripture, Job 22, 28. You shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. And in Matthew 15, 11, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. So watch what you're saying. The children are listening, and not only the children outside of us, but the children within us are listening. And so is divine potentiality. It's listening, and it's gonna give us exactly what we are saying. Look at your life, and your life is a mirror for what it is that you've been saying in the past. So if there's anything that you wanna change in that life, in that mirror, start speaking about it differently. Now I wanna talk about the fourth agreement, and I decided to do it this way instead of in order because the second agreement and the third agreement, which are don't take things personally and don't make assumptions, kind of go together. And the fourth agreement is always do your best, and it really is the action step for all of the previous agreements. So to me, it made sense to talk about it when I'm talking about being impeccable with your word. The most important part about always doing your best is remembering that your best changes. Could be from moment to moment. It changes from day to day. So cut yourself some slack and know that your best today could be different tomorrow. But it is the action step of this agreement. So be sure that you're taking action. See yourself doing the best you can and being impeccable with your word. Be a clear communicator. Mean what you say and follow through with what it is that you're saying. This was a big one for me. Do not speak against yourself. Do not speak against myself. Become really aware of what it is you say to yourself when you look in the mirror, or maybe when you're not even looking in the mirror, just in your day-to-day -day process. What are you saying to yourself about yourself? Your best is always going to be changed, so you have to become conscious of where you are in this moment. It's a pathway to greater awareness. And if you're just slacking off, it's a time to look at why. Why am I slacking off? What's up? 
Now, Ruiz, in the Four Agreements, he doesn't promise enlightenment, but greater love and happiness. So that requires something from us, right? We have to do something. When we do our best, we live life intensely. And when you say, and you can say, I've done my best, you have no regrets. You will learn to accept yourself. And, and that doesn't mean be a perfectionist, because that's the other end of the, persp of the um, spectrum. Thank you. That's the other end of the spectrum. When we become that obsessive and compulsive to be a perfectionist, that also brings misery. That is not being our best. You know, if we think we have to do it right, well, who decides what's right? We do. If we think that we're not going to make any mistakes, who decides? Who makes that rule up? We're going to make mistakes. That's it. You have to check in on your motivation. If we're doing something because we want to be good enough or do it good enough to be loved, that's perfectionism rather than I'm doing it from my heart. I'm doing it the best I can right now where I am. So don't let doing your best become a stressor. Let it become a habit and do it that way because it's what you want to do, not because you feel like you have to do it that way. I know many people are really busy and they think that that's doing their best. They're really busy, they're getting a lot done, they're getting a lot accomplished and they have great success. But inside, they have a sense of lack, a sense of guilt. Outside, they have lots of great stuff, lots of great things going on, but inside, they're not feeling so good about themselves, even when they reach impossible standards. I remember when I was in corporate America, I always looked great. I always had on that power suit. I was so scared, I was so petrified, I was so insecure on the inside, it took me getting out of corporate America and really following my dream to get to that place of feeling strong from the inside and doing things that I really wanted to do and not caring so much about what other people thought of me. So much of my journey, well, 13 years of my journey from out of college was all about looking at what other people thought rather than looking at what I thought. I also noticed it in my life where I would ski when I would go skiing, I wasn't such a great skier, but I always looked really good. Like, that's what was important to me. On the other hand, I'm a great dancer. When I go out dancing, I don't care how I look. It's, it's, it's coming from within me. So I use that as kind of like guidelines for myself. When I feel really good about what I'm doing and I know it's coming from my heart, it actually doesn't matter how I look on the outside. So when you're doing more than your best and you're, and you're doing it from a place of perfectionism, you know that you're out of balance. And when you're not doing, you're not showing up for the game because who knows, maybe you're, you have a history of feeling like you've done so much and you have resentment that you didn't get credit for it or you didn't get what you want out of it. So you tend to sit back. Become aware of what those are because those are agreements that you've made with yourself and you want to break those agreements and show up. The best showstopper, the biggest showstopper that we have in our mind is, and I know this one well, who do I think I am? Who do I think I am to want that? Who do I think I am that I could be an author? Who do I think I am that I could try that? It's, it's a really big showstopper and it keeps us contained. So as soon as you hear anything like those words, stop yourself and say, I am a divine child of God and I could do whatever my heart wants me to do. As long as you can stand behind it, put one foot in front of the other. So we have to learn from our mistakes. Do your best because you want to do your best. Make it a habit. And this action is about living life fully. Express what you want and who you are. You'll love yourself more and you'll accept yourself more. The agreements only work if you do your best. And when you do your best, you won't judge yourself or feel guilty or punish yourself. It's not what we do, but who we do, how we do it. So show up. I encourage you. Answer the invitation. Show up for the call. It is in this moment that anything is possible. 
I want to wrap it up with talking about a movie that I think everybody has seen, I hope everyone has seen, titled Forrest Gump. Now, I think there are two things that made this a runaway hit, besides casting Tom Hanks, who was amazing. The wonderful editing they did, inserting Forrest Gump in those iconic moments that he wasn't really there, but they put him in. But what was really the best part of the movie was the narrative. That a simple person, a simple man, who is not by exterior standards really equipped to be a man of great accomplishment or success or notoriety. And yet, he became all those things by simply being authentic. He did not, he did the next right thing and always stayed true to himself. He communicated directly, he told the truth, he was good for his word, and he didn't take anything personally. What does that sound like? He certainly was a great example, so no matter what he did, he did his best. So again, the four agreements, as I said in the beginning, are guidance to a way of life that teaches one to be happy, joyous, and authentic from a place of love. The work in front of us is really simpler than we think. Maybe we don't have to accomplish so much or be so educated or so indispensable for other people's lives. What does matter is that what we do really comes from our heart. We cannot fail when it comes from our heart. When we break the false agreements, when we are impeccable with our words and always do our best, we must succeed. If you choose to try, if you choose to step out, you're guaranteed success. And do you want to know why? Because the world absolutely needs you as you are authentic. The world needs all of us showing up, being impeccable with our word and doing our best. So do what you do, what only you can do. Do it with your heart and your arms open. Write your book. Watch the world open up. Begin today. Release your inhibitions and be impeccable. <laughs>